हेलो फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर नंद कुमार रावे फ्रॉम कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग अंबा दुबई इज गोइंग टू डील विथ अप्लाइड थर्मोडाइनमिक्स टू इज द फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन अप्लाइड थर्मोडाइनमिक्स वन सो इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द कंटेंट्स ऑफ अप्लाइड थर्मोडाइनमिक्स टू टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द डेफिनेशन ऑफ रेफ्रिजरेशन applications of refrigeration unit for measurement of refrigeration or refrigerating effect coefficient of performance of a refrigeration system refrigeration load system of refrigeration systems of refrigeration that is methods of producing refrigerating effect now coming to the refrigeration so generally the refrigeration is nothing but the process of heat removal from a closed space and after removing the heat from a closed space that space has to be maintained at the temperature lower than the surrounding temperature only the removal of heat at once is not sufficient it is to be removed as well as the heat removal process has to be continued in order to maintain the temperature of a space so what happens once we remove heat from a closed space there will be leakage of heat from various sources into the space and that amount of heat which leaks in to that space has to be continuously removed in order to maintain temperature of that closed space so for example if we have we close the space this is a closed space Now, once we remove heat from this, huge amount of heat is removed from this closed space. Then, the continuously there will be heat gain into the system from surrounding. So, from surrounding, some amount of heat always flows into the system because the temperature of surrounding is higher and temperature of system is lower. So, due to the temperature difference, always the heat energy tends to move from surrounding to the system that's why the temperature gradually starts to increase therefore the process of heat removal has to be maintained continuously in order to remove this heat leakage once we remove heat from this closed space is not sufficient so this refrigeration is defined as refrigeration is the process of heat removal from a closed space so as to reduce its temperature lower than surrounding temperature and maintain it at that temperature is nothing but the refrigeration now in older days this refrigeration was achieved by naturally harvested ice and that ice was used to store uh, the flesh as well as uh, for flesh transportation or some perishable products such as fruits and vegetables so in older days the technique of producing ice was not known to the people therefore they used to uh, carry the ice uh, which is naturally produced in the cold regions and that ice was used for storage of flesh transportation of flesh as well as other perishable products then we move to the applications of refrigeration so this ice is used to chill water about 5 to 7 degrees celsius so that is for chilling the water then used to produce ice so refrigeration system is used to produce ice and earlier the natural ice was used now this the ice requirement is fulfilled by producing artificially produced ice domestic applications so everyone is using a refrigerator at home so that is nothing but one of the domestic application of a refrigeration system that it is used in food processing and storage so some of the foods have to be processed at a particular temperature and in that food processing methods as well as storage of certain kind of food perishable food so refrigeration is used then used for milk pasteurization so for uh, 
killing the bacteria in the milk at lower temperature. So this refrigeration system is used for pasteurization of milk so that the milk can be preserved for longer duration. Then used to carbonate the soft drinks. So carbon dioxide is added into the soft drinks and that is uh, made by the process of refrigeration. And storage of vegetables and food products. For that also the refrigeration is used. It is used for air conditioning for human comfort. So air conditioning is nothing but the application of refrigeration. So in air conditioning only air is not cool. The condition of or quality of air is maintained and that is done with the help of a refrigeration system. So in order to reduce or increase or to maintain temperature of air, the refrigeration system is used in air conditioning. To produce and maintain cryo cryogen below 100 degree Kelvin. So that is nothing but nitrogen, oxygen, argon. These gases are known as cryogen. And in order to produce these gases, so this cryogen, uh, the temperature is required to be 100 Kelvin. So if we say that this is 273 degree Kelvin, then it is 0 degree Celsius. So it is minus 173 degree Celsius. At minus 173 degree Celsius, these gases are separated. And therefore, these gases are known as cryogen at cryogenic temperature. Then to manufacture cold rubber. So the refrigeration system is used to manufacture cold rubber as well as it is used in oil refinery processes. The refrigeration is used for steel treatment. So heat treatment processes are carried out at uh, various temperatures. The molecular structure of steel changes and accordingly properties of steel also change for that purpose for treatment of steel the refrigeration system is used so it is used for liquefaction of gas at lower temperature gas gets condensed and that can be handled very easily in order to liquefy the gases the refrigeration system is used so LPG, as you know, LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. So this is first liquefied, a liquid uh, is produced and then it is uh, filled into the tanks and all. So that is nothing but, uh, we call it as a liquefaction of gas. Then to maintain food grain in cold storage as well as in the warehouses. So at particular temperature, the insects uh, will not harm or may not harm to the grains and it is uh, easier to store these uh, food grains at lower temperature. Therefore, the refrigeration system uh, is used in the form of air conditioning in a <coughs> cold storage as well as warehouses. So you might have seen many food grains which are stored in the warehouses uh, are without any kind of damage and uh, fresh as if they are, they are uh, such grains have been harvested just uh, recently. So that quality can be maintained with the help of a refrigeration system. Used for preservation and transportation of medicines. So again this refrigeration is used for preservation of medicine as well as some of the refrigerated vans are uh, manufactured. Now those vans are used for transportation of not only medicines also for transportation of grains, vegetables, fruits. So that can be transported from one place to the another place, uh, which takes longer duration for transportation and there is every chance of uh, getting degraded or uh, getting damaged. So for such uh, products, so transportation vehicles are provided with refrigeration system. Now, the unit of refrigeration. <coughs> Generally, the refrigeration is measured in the unit known as the ton. Uh, so, a ton of refrigeration is defined as the amount of refrigerating effect. What is the refrigerating effect? It is nothing but amount of heat removed. So, a ton of refrigeration is defined as the amount of refrigerating effect. Refrigerating effect is nothing but amount of heat removed. To produce one ton, that is 1000 kg of ice, 
from water at 0 degree Celsius into ice at 0 degree Celsius in 24 hours. So first what we do, we take 1000 kg of water which is at 0 degree Celsius temperature. Temperature of water is 0 degree Celsius and this is 1000 kg. 1000 kg of water stator which is at 0 degree Celsius and then we start to remove heat from this 1000 kg of water in 24 hours. So this heat is removed in 24 hours and then it gets converted into the uh, ice at 0 degree Celsius. So latent heat is extracted from this 1000 kg of water. So this latent heat which is removed is nothing but turn off refrigeration. The amount of latent heat removed from 1000 kg of water at 0 degree Celsius to convert it into the ice at 0 degree Celsius in 24 hours is known as turn off refrigeration. So now what is refrigerating effect? So what refrigerating effect is nothing but it is the amount of heat extracted, heat removed from a space to be cooled is known as a refrigerating effect. Say for example this is the space which you want to cool. So from this space you want to remove heat. So amount of heat which is removed from this space Q is known as a refrigerating effect. So here a turn of refrigeration is nothing but amount of heat removed from removed from 1000 kg of water which is at 0 degree Celsius and converting it into the ice at 0 degree Celsius in 24 hours. That is nothing but the unit of refrigeration, turn of refrigeration. Unit of refrigeration is turn of refrigeration. <coughs> now, how this uh, turn of refrigeration is obtained, calculated? So the latent heat of ice is 335 kJ per kg. If you want to convert water which is at 0 degree Celsius into ice at 0 degree Celsius, you have to remove 335 kJ of heat from 1 kg of water. That is known as a latent heat. Latent heat is, uh, its name is latent heat because uh, when, when you remove heat from the water, the temperature of water does not for it remains 0 degree Celsius, only there is a change of phase from liquid to solid. So here, this is known as latent heat of uh, what you call ice or fusion. Then one ton of refrigeration is nothing but amount of heat uh, which you are going to remove is 335 kilojoules from each kg. So you are taking 1000 kg of water. So 1000 into 335 kilojoules per kg. So this is nothing but one done. But this is to be removed. Uh, 335 kilojoules has to be removed in one hour. So uh, here a per hour. So now if we say 1000 kg of water is there, 335 kilojoules per kg of uh, latent heat has to be removed and in 24 hours, 24 hours uh, you are going to take and that is to be converted into minute, 24 into 60. So that is nothing but amount of heat removed in kilojoules per minute. So at what rate that heat has to be removed? So the rate of heat removal is 1000 into 335 divided by 24 into 60 kilojoules per minute. So this is to be removed in 24 hours. So here uh, this is divided by 24. <coughs> this hours is converted into kilojoules. Uh, sorry, hours is converted into minutes by multiplying it by 60. Then uh, on simplification this works out to be 332.63 kilojoules per minute. So if, if we convert it in kilojoules per second, so divided by 60. So minutes is converted by multiplying it by 60. So dividing it in denominator by 60. So 332.63 divided by 60 kilojoules per second or 
kilowatt. This works out to be 3.87 kilowatt or kilojoules per second approximately. So it is taken as 3.5 kilowatt. One ton of refrigeration is taken as 3.5 kilowatt. So here 1000 uh, kg is the mass of water then 335 kilojoules per kg is latent heat and that is to be removed in 24 hours so divided by 24 hours so 1000 into 335 divided by 24 and this 24 is multiplied by 60 to convert this hours into minutes so that will be kilojoules per minute this is nothing but a rate of heat removal so if we simplify this works out to be 232.63 kilojoules per minute and uh, if we want to convert this minute into second, then again we divide it by 60, then it will be in kilojoules per second or in kilowatt. So after simplification, it works out to be 3.87 kilowatt, and approximately it is taken as 3.5 kilowatt. One ton of refrigeration, generally, if you uh, refer in the book, it is equal to 3.5 kilowatt, or it is sometimes. Uh, 210 kilojoules per minute in uh, books you can find it. So coefficient of performance. Generally uh, what we do uh, for measuring the efficiency of any device, so we find efficiency as the output divided by input ratio of output to input is nothing but efficiency of that system or machine. So here now we want to find out the efficiency that is the performance of a refrigeration system and it's, it has got special name as the coefficient of performance. So what is this coefficient of performance? The coefficient of performance is defined as the ratio of heat extracted, heat removed that is known as refrigerating effect to the work done that is energy input used to achieve desired effect, desired refrigerating effect. So for example, you want to maintain temperature at minus 10 degrees Celsius. So some amount of heat has to be removed from that space. So the amount of heat which is removed from space is known as the refrigerating effect. In order to maintain this space at minus 10 degrees Celsius, say for example, you are going to expect 100 kilojoules of heat. So in order to remove 100 kilojoules of heat, you are doing some work. Uh, some electrical energy is supplied or some uh, mechanical work is supplied to that machine in order to extract that amount of heat. So in the refrigerator there is a compressor, it consumes electrical energy. So energy supplied to the compressor or that machine is known as a work done. So the ratio of refrigerating effect to the work done is known as coefficient of performance. Otherwise this coefficient of performance is greater than 1 in a refrigerating machine. Why it will be greater than one that we will see in detail afterwards. So coefficient of performance is nothing but heat extracted divided by work done. So heat extracted is nothing but refrigerating effect divided by work done is nothing but energy supply. Then heat is heat extracted is represented by Q, work done is represented by W, Q divided by W. So that is nothing but the coefficient of performance where Q is representing effect or amount of heat extracted and W is the amount of work done in order to extract that amount of heat from the closed space. Then refrigeration load. What is this refrigeration load? So generally we remove heat from the uh, space to be cooled. So once we remove heat from the space to be cooled, so that is not sufficient. We have to continue this process of heat removal because the heat from surrounding always enters into the system or that closed space, that leakage of heat. The rate at which heat enters into the space has to be continuously removed and that is nothing but the refrigeration load. So just we see the definition of a refrigeration load. The rate at which heat enters into the refrigerated space, which has to be removed in order to maintain a desired temperature of space, is known as a refrigeration load. So here, once we have a space, once we remove heat from this space, is not sufficient. Always, uh, because of temperature gradient, heat tries to enter into this 
space and the amount of heat at, at which it enters into the system has to be continuously removed in order to maintain temperature and that amount of heat which has to be removed or amount of heat continuously entering into the system is known as the refrigeration load system of refrigeration so refrigeration systems are classified as natural refrigeration system first one is natural refrigeration system that is again classified as using ice or snow so in olden days the refrigerating effect was produced by using ice or snow the naturally uh, produced ice or natural ice was used to produce refrigerating effect and then by evaporation process evaporating uh, the water so evaporation also produces refrigerating effect that we see how it produces then mechanical refrigeration systems in that using non condensable gases such as carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide and air then using condensable gases such as vapor compression refrigeration system then vapor absorption refrigeration system <coughs> and other methods such as magnetic refrigeration then vortex tube refrigeration and thermoelectric refrigeration and steam jet refrigeration system so these are uh, so many methods for producing refrigerating effect now we will see one by one so ice refrigeration so in this ice refrigeration this is the compartment where there is a space for keeping the ice in this uh, compartment and when ice is kept here so the air which comes in contact with this ice block gets cooled and the <coughs> air which is having uh, lower temperature will have high density and high density air automatically moves in the downward direction and the air which is at the bottom of the system are having higher temperature with lower density will start to move in the upward direction by thermosynchron principle so this cold air moves in the downward direction hot air moves or warm air moves in the upward direction thereby transferring heat from bottom to the top and this ice starts to melt because this ice gains the heat from warm air and cools the air so this air gets recirculated from top to bottom automatically and this ice starts to melt and this ice when starts to melt gets converted into water and that water is drained out from this pipe so this is how the ice refrigeration system works so in olden days this kind of refrigeration system was used for producing refrigerating effect so evaporative refrigeration what is this evaporative refrigeration you might have seen the porous earthen pot as well as thick cloth bag and bottle covered with a wet cloth so here the water from this uh, earthen pot comes out from the porous holes over its surface when water comes over its surface the air comes in contact with this water on the surface of pot and evaporates uh, the layer of water which is on the porous uh, surface of pot by absorbing the latent heat of vaporization from the water present in the pot this water which is on the surface of pot gets evaporated thereby cooling the water in the pot so what happens here when water droplet come on the surface so as this pot is porous so water comes outside this pot and it comes in contact with the air so when it comes in contact with the air Uh, this water absorbs latent heat of vaporization from this pot and this water gets evaporated so this heat is absorbed from pot and this water gets evaporated and because of this the temperature of water in the pot falls below the surrounding temperature same principle so you might have seen this uh, thick cloth bags uh, hanging up with the truck so truck drivers are using this kind of bag the water is filled in this bag and the water uh, this bag is having porous holes so water comes on the surface of this bag and this water which is on the surface of bag gets evaporated by absorbing latent heat of vaporization and thereby cooling the water in this bag same principle 
so you might have seen some bottles covered with the wet cloth so this wet cloth uh, is having water and this water which is in this wet cloth absorbs latent heat vaporization from the water which is inside this bottle and water present in this cloth starts to evaporate thereby absorbing latent heat vaporization from this bottle thereby cooling the liquid in the bottle so this is how the evaporative refrigeration works then next one the artificial snow is produced <clears throat> how artificial snow is produced so here uh, the compressed air is passed through the nozzle and suddenly this air is expanded as soon as this air gets expanded the temperature of air falls so compression of air increases the temperature of air as we know uh, similarly expansion of air reduces the temperature of air so as soon as this uh, air is expanded so here pressure of this air uh, is going to change and because of change in the pressure the temperature falls and in this uh, path of this uh, compressed air the water is spread as this water is uh, made to flow in this path of compressed air as soon as this air gets expanded temperature of this air falls and uh, at that time immediately water comes in contact with this uh, compressed air which is suddenly expanded and due to sudden fall in the temperature so this water gets condensed and it comes out in the form of snow so this is known as artificial snow formation or production of snow artificially so this is how the compressed air is used to produce snow artificially then uh, liquid gas refrigeration so this is uh, the liquid gas refrigeration system so here high pressure liquid nitrogen is uh, kept in this tank and this liquid uh, nitrogen is spread, spread into this space so this is spray header spray header then this is insulation provided to this space and this nitrogen liquid nitrogen is spread as soon as this liquid nitrogen is spread in this space <coughs> this nitrogen gets expanded and it absorbs heat energy from this space and thereby cooling this temperature of space so here the temperature of space is uh, reduced and here there is a, a temperature sensing element so this senses the temperature and depending on that the signals are sent to this control box and control box uh, regulates the flow of liquid nitrogen to the space so nitrogen generally air contains 72% of uh, nitrogen and uh, nitrogen is not harmful to the human being or any good products so as this liquid nitrogen is passed into this space suddenly it absorbs the heat from the space and gets converted into gas and this liquid uh, nitrogen when gets converted into vapor or gas that is taken out from this space and this space is maintained at the temperature below the surrounding temperature and that flow of nitrogen is controlled with the help of a control box or electronic device and third one is steam jet refrigeration so here also the similar principle of snow producing machine is used so here this is the chamber where uh, we want to produce cooling effect so now here uh, what happens uh, there is a steam boiler so from this steam boiler steam is passed through this control wall into this steam nozzle when this steam is expanded suddenly so here pressure falls and because of fall in the pressure so <coughs> water gets uh, vaporized and water vapors uh, move into this steam nozzle and uh, here the cooling effect uh, takes place and through this ejector so this steam passes into the condenser and this condensate is removed from the system so here the cooling effect is achieved uh, with the help of steam so this steam as suddenly expanded so this absorbs vapors of water and from this uh, chamber the temperature is going to get reduced and this uh, temperature uh, uh, reduced temperature affects on the water so this temperature of water starts to fall so then this water is circulated to the 
air conditioning plant when again it absorbs heat energy into the air conditioning plant then it comes back to this chamber so there will be loss of water and that loss of water is filled up with the make up water make up water is supplied from here into this chamber so this is known as a steam jet refrigeration so a very small amount of refrigerating effect is achieved <coughs> in this case of steam jet refrigeration system now thermoelectric refrigeration system what is this thermoelectric refrigeration system you might have heard about seebeck effect what is seebeck effect so in this seebeck effect uh, two wires of two different metals are connected to each other and kept at uh, two junctions are formed one junction is kept at cold temperature and it another junction is kept at higher temperature so this temperature difference is responsible to produce emf and that uh, produced emf is uh, sensed by a galvanometer that is nothing but if we are using two dissimilar metals connected with each other and two junctions are kept at two different temperatures it produces emf electromotive force that is nothing but voltage so this is known as a seebeck effect what we are doing we are produce uh, keeping one junction at hot uh, hot system and another is kept at cold system or cold junction so that is responsible to produce emf or voltage reverse of that is known as the peltier effect reverse means what happens here uh, voltage is produced now here what we we'll do two dissimilar metals that is bismuth and copper are connected and two junctions are produced so one junction is here another junction is here and to this system we supply electric voltage dc voltage so when we supply voltage automatically it produces cold junction and hot junction that is nothing but heat is absorbed at cold junction and this heat is transferred at hot junction so at cold junction the refrigerating effect is produced the refrigerating effect is produced at cold junction as this voltage is supplied in first case in seebeck effect we are not supplying voltage we are maintaining two junctions at two different temperatures here we are not going to maintain two junctions at two different temperatures but we are supplying electric voltage and because of supply of uh, dc supply to the system so it produces automatically cold junction and hot junction reverse of seebeck effect is peltier effect and using this peltier effect the refrigeration system is uh, refrigeration effect is uh, obtained now uh, magnetic refrigeration what is this magnetic refrigeration in brief we see so here when any magnetic material is magnetized magnetized when we magnetize this uh, material it gets heated so a magnetic material if it is not magnetized the molecules in uh, that uh, magnetic material will be a random fashion just like this so when we magnetize a uh, magnetic material by providing electric current uh, through the coil passing uh, pass uh, surrounding it so if a material is wound with the electric coil and the electric current is passed through the, that then that uh, material gets magnetized so at that time the heat is produced and heat is produced the temperature of that uh, substance or that component increases so that is known as adiabatic uh, heating so in that case the temperature increases earlier temperature was t then it is t plus delta p so all magnetization heat is produced so it becomes hot so at that time heat is removed from that uh, substance so the magnetic material it remains magnetic but heat is removed from that so heat is transferred using a fluid so here uh, this is the magnetic substance and it is magnetized because of magnetization it produces heat and that heat is taken away by a uh, some liquid so uh, or maybe a so uh, this uh, magnetic uh, substance is cooled now so temperature is again it is equal to the initial temperature now Uh, what we do is this magnetic material uh, so mag already which was uh, non magnetic now we have magnetized 
temperature has increased again this temperature is reduced now still it is magnetic substance you can see the structure of molecule then after that it is demagnetized all magnetization it produces heat of demagnetization it becomes cold so it temperature falls below the surrounding temperature now this substance is capable of absorbing heat so this absorbs heat by producing representing effect here representing effect is produced so earlier say for example it is at temperature room temperature 27 degrees celsius so this substance is at room temperature 27 degrees celsius which is non magnetic you can see the structure of molecules in this is not uniform so all magnetization the structure of molecules you can observe is in a particular fashion so temperature of this magnetic material is increased so now this is cool but this structure remains same so after that uh, this uh, material is demagnetized how demagnetization it becomes cool so this is again at 27 degrees celsius how magnetization say for example it becomes 37 so it reaches 37 degrees celsius of magnetization again on cooling it reaches to 27 degrees celsius now on demagnetization temperature becomes say for example 17 degrees celsius so now when the substance is at 17 degrees celsius it has got affinity to absorb heat energy so heat energy is absorbed so once it absorbs heat energy again it reaches temperature of 27 degrees celsius that is nothing but it uh, regains its original state again this cycle is repeated so you can see here <coughs> he uh, when uh, magnetic metal is magnetized it produces heat or it gets heated so on removing heat heat is transferred from that substance then uh, a cold substance already which is uh, magnet then it is demagnetized then it becomes uh, cold or the temperature of that substance falls below the surrounding temperature and it has affinity to absorb heat energy again this process is repeated that is known as a magnetic representation system so with this we stop here in next lecture we will see few more things about this representation system thank you